so we'll start with the talk on uh, specifically focusing on the under diagnosis and over diagnosis of normal tension glaucoma typically it is defined as glaucomatous optic disc cupping and visual field loss with iop less than 21 mm of hg open angles and absence of any contributing ocular disorder but it is not as simple as that it there are this is one entity which has many missed cases as well as over diagnosed cases what causes the ntg to be missed is our mindset which somehow has incorporated that raised iop is an important component of glaucoma most screening programs for glaucoma rely on intraocular pressure as a screening tool and hence we miss normal tension glaucoma cases also when a clinician sees normal intraocular pressure they don't tend to look for early signs for disc changes and hence miss the cases also there is a entity that is high myopia which is very similar both disc changes and field changes similar to glaucoma and hence sometimes confusion occurs whether it is just a myopia or a glaucoma also it is a slowly progressive disease hence the patient presents late so all these cases lead to under diagnosis of normal tension glaucoma now what are the causes of over diagnosis primary open angle glaucoma when in your clinic could present as normal pressure and uh, there can be large physiological cups these are often labeled as ntg then there is tonometric underestimation of actual iop a glaucoma could be in remission it could be congenital disc anomalies or vital or intraocular tumors and again a myopic disc let us discuss a case a 28 year old woman presented in 2013 with a history of normal pressure hydrocephalus came for referred fundus examination she had a visual acuity of 6 by 6 in both eyes and intraocular pressures were normal cd ratio was near normal 0.3 and 0.4 but there was asymmetrical narrowing of the neuroretinal rim because of asymmetrical narrowing a visual field test was done which showed peripheral mild field defects the patient was in uh, advised anti glaucoma medication but being asymptomatic she denied and in 2017 the same patient came with uh, these fields the pressures were still normal but there was progressive visual field loss so the patient actually had a normal tension glaucoma and what can bring the diagnosis is that despite 0.3 and 0.4 cup the rim is irregularly thinned and also the early field defects have to be recognized in this case a young myop with abnormal looking disc but normal intraocular pressure open angles and no signs of secondary glaucoma these are tilted disc hence the uh, blood vessels are moved towards the periphery and hence it is giving an appearance of a glaucomatous disc the both the nerves are oval and tilted and there is significant temporal peripapillary atrophy also looking at the fields of this patient the right eye had thin retinal nerve fiber layer defect inferiorly while the left eye had anaphyl loss inferiorly as well significant this patient again was advised anti glaucoma but uh, due to pregnancy she discontinued it we followed the patient and there was no change in glaucoma progression analysis over five year period either on oct or visual fields even without treatment and the pressures stayed in normal range so it was basically we diagnosed it as normal tension glaucoma but turned out to be simply myopic disc in case c there is a 82 year old male with progressive diminution of vision in left eye visual acuity was 6 by 6 612 that is 612 in left eye pressures were normal uh, right eye was uh, near normal cup that is 0.4 and is in true was followed left eye had 0.7 cupping inferior rim thinning and other signs of glaucoma as well that is bclv was there laminar dot sign and peripapillary atrophy was also present the patient was diagnosed as left eye ntg elsewhere and uh, on uh, fund uh, fields examination the right eye showed fields similar to glaucomatous changes there was a superior arcuate scotoma and also dense supranasal paracentral defect although the cup did not match these fields and also in left eye there was a vertical field defect which suggests neurological field defect the mri was done and a 4 mm hypophyseal adenoma was noted on the mri so this was again a misdiagnosed case of ntg so we have both under diagnosis and over diagnosis so how to avoid this 
we should get back to our basics. A very good clinical history is required for normal tension glaucoma. Always look for positive signs in examination rather than making it a diagnosis of exclusion. Mood the coexisting points in history, in examination and in investigations. When many coexisting points are there, more likely we are that uh, right to diagnose the NTG. Take a good systemic history of sleep apnea, migraine, anemia, arrhythmias, cold hand and feet, that is Raynaud's phenomena, signs, uh, symptoms of hypothyroidism, stroke, hypertension, and hypotension, diabetes mellitus. All these systemic cond conditions, one or more, if associated, would go towards, not go towards, but would be one of the clues. And the use of systemic beta blockers has double implication. Beta blockers, when used systemically, can give lower IOPs than uh, actually it is. And also, uh, because of uh, beta blocker, there can be nocturnal hypotension. Then history of corticosteroid use is important, both topical as well as systemic steroid use. History of ocular trauma or surgery, head injury, acute blood loss in any form could uh, also lead to normal tension glaucoma, though it can be a non-progressive normal tension glaucoma, but any insult to the optic disc has to be noted. Then family history of either normal tension or primary open angle glaucoma, since they are overlapping conditions, it has to be taken. Risk factors like smoking, and also rule out any uh, history of acute pain, intermittent pain and blurring. It could be an angle closure glaucoma, do a good gonioscopy. Now coming on to examination, if the visual equity of the patient does not correspond to the disc changes, it is an alarming sign. Then do a color vision test always. It is something which is missed by senior consultants. Uh, always do a color vision to differentiate from non-glaucomatous optic neuropathies. Then intraocular pressure has to be measured on applanation toronometry and always correct it for the corneal thickness to make sure that it is not falsely low. Or diurnal variation test is a must for every case diagnosed to be NTG. Then a pupillary response should be noted separately. Gonoscopy for open angles and also to rule out any pigments present there. Slit lamp examination uh, to look for any signs of remitting glaucoma. Then dilate it, always dilate the patient fully and then do the fundus examination even if we are using a 90D or 78D. And also look at the nerve fiber layer besides the optic nerve head. Now there are some signs in the optic disc which are again clues towards NTG. These are positive signs. Look for the presence of these signs. One is absent RPE, which presence is crescent or hello at the disc margin. Cupping is most prominent close to this halo and corresponding field loss is also seen. Then splinter hemorrhages or drans hemorrhages are commonly seen. Then focal ischemic changes, also known as notching or focal thinning, and it is associated with dense arcuate or hemifield defects. Then it could present as a senile sclerotic disc, which has a shallow cup, a pale disc, and surrounding spontaneous luminous pulsations are less prevalent. Then uh, these patients may also show acquired optic disc pit or acquired pit of the optic nerve as we say it. So some of these signs along with the history which we have taken earlier, these are photographs of the same. We can see the trans hemorrhages. We can see the hello here, the peripapillary atrophy, both alpha and the beta zones, the senile sclerotic disc, the acquired optic pit, so these specific disc changes, if they are there, it could suggest a diagnosis of NTG. Then field defects also specifically in normal tension glaucoma, scotomas, uh, scotomas are closer to fixation. They are more localized and the field defects overweigh disc changes. Also the pattern standard deviation uh, gives a better clue than the mean deviation. These are some of the field changes. Now, how to differentiate the common entities which are misdiagnosed as uh, normal tension glaucoma? As I've already told, always look for diurnal fluctuation and uh, always look at the intraocular pressure at different times of the day. Then a large physiological cup, if we are seeing, always go for a visual field test and also evaluate the parents. They may also be having a large physiological cup. For tonometric, tonometric underestimation, do the corneal thickness and get it corrected. 
uh, for glaucoma and remission, see for any signs of uveitis, which were earlier, any signs of trauma, a sphincter tear, or uh, angle recession, or so, any sign of trauma. Congenital disc anomalies. Congenital disc anomalies would mostly be unilateral, and normal tension glaucoma is mostly not unilateral. So that is one clue. Then it is associated, congenital anomalies are associated with amblyopia and strabismus. Now, old branch retinal vein occlusion, uh, it also gives an optic disc appearance of notching with arcuate defect, uh, and uh, which is similar to the appearance seen in normal tension glaucoma, but again, this will again be unilateral. Anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, this can also, acute episode can go unnoticed, and if the fibers are not close to fovea, it may later appear as pale disc with notching. And with pressures being normal, the, this can be differentiated by uh, the discs are usually large and it is again unilateral. Patients may have a raised ESR as well. Then optic nerve drusens could be a differential diagnosis, which can be differentiated easily using the OCT and FFA. Then orbital or intracranial tumors or other space occupying lesions. There is nerve fiber layer loss with pelar and focal thinning may be seen. Optic nerves are usually larger with large cups and asymmetrical with the other eye. In these cases, MRI is warranted. And myopic disc. In, this is again a difficult uh, case because in myopia, the fundus picture as well as uh, uh, these changes on the uh, fields can be similar. In that case, especially in a patient of myopic disc, we have to consider a lot many things. The clues of systemic history, the clues of optic disc changes, along with retinal nerve fiber layer thinning in the OCT. If all these clues together are suggestive, then we, and uh, looking at other factors, whether the patient is young, one-eyed, how much is the risk factor, we have to start the treatment. Now, not every case of normal tension glaucoma can undergo MRI, but there are some cases which warrant MRI. These are unilateral disc changes, because uh, as I told earlier, normal tension glaucoma is mostly because of systemic associations and won't be unilateral. Then if the pelar is more than cupping, if the neurological or vertical field defect is there on the visual field or visual fields which are inconsistent with the cupping as we saw in the earlier case, if the visual field progression is there despite lowering of intraocular pressure, unilateral field defect Although the eyes discs are similar, but the field effects are not similar, and color vision deficit in the absence of field deficit. These are some indications where MRI is warranted. So clinical history, a good examination, assisted by investigations. All these together, they collage this together, they can help us in diagnosing a case of normal tension glaucoma rather than either of it. It has to be brought together. And only then can we avoid the misdiagnosis. Thank you so much.